So uh, last weekend was the Illinois Orchid Society meeting and we had a speaker, Bill Rogerson, who came to speak on how to grow cat lands. And so I thought I would go through my collection based on his talk and um, see how I was doing in terms of each of his points since about 50% of my collection is cat lands. And in his talk, he had three big points about growing cat layers. Light, water, and when to repot them. And he basically said that if you follow those three big points, then you will grow species cat layers, and of course then hybrids very successfully. Now, I don't have a huge number of species cat layers, but I do have lots of hybrids. So I think I've got maybe 250 hybrid cattleyas in this room. So today, on this sunny day, I thought I would go through and look at my collection in terms of light. So Bill grows in a greenhouse. Um, and so his lecture was given in terms of what would you do if you had a greenhouse? And he basically said, if you have a greenhouse, don't put it in shade, cut down all the trees and give your cat layers all the light that it can get because we grow in Chicago. So he actually lives north of Chicago. I live west of Chicago, but basically we don't get enough light up here this far from the equator. So he was like, cut down those trees, full sunlight, don't do shade cloth, you know. And so this is my grow space and let's look at what I've done with light. Today is a sunny day and I have um, tiered my cat layers. So my big cat layers are on top as well as the ones that I think that need the most light. I've always felt that uh, cat layers that exhibit a nodosa very strongly in their lineage need the most light. And so you can see right here, I have a uh, Sunny Delight Maj right here. It's in blue. It's got a lot of, it's showing a lot of Nodosa parentage. It's up top, it's getting the most light. It's blooming. Uh, I have a bunch of other uh, Cattleya types up there. Then on my next shelf right over there, so this is near the front of my grow area where we would have um, the most light because uh, I have a eastern southern exposure, and so here right to the, uh, the south, right? So here is a yellow bird. It uh, also needs a lot of light. This is the one that took the best of show at the Illinois Orchid Society um, spring show. Um, actually, I'm sorry, not best of show, best of class for cat layers. And uh, it's almost done blooming here. So it's also near the front because I think it needs a lot of light. Uh, I have, let's see, I have a clandier up here, which I understand needs a lot of light. Um, okay, I have a lot of other things in my collection, you know, like here's a Dendrobium wazellii, which I understand needs a lot of light. Um, but I'm going to really try to focus on just my cat layers today. So let's see. Um, I have some recently repotted cattleyas down in here. You know, some of them have crappy foliage because they've suffered all kinds of things through the years like hailstorms and fungus. And currently there's no deadly diseases going around because I killed all the fungus, but um, you know, the damage remains. So let's see, I have, I have this um, David Sanders right here, which is a brass brassavola. Uh, cross and um, it's near the front needs a lot of light. I'm trying to get it some watering on there um, Here is a nodosa right here. So you can see it's right against the eastern exposure and it's getting a lot of light um, As we go down this rack um, I have my seedling catalayas on the bottom and so there these guys are small and they have a large 
amount of space so they can get a lot of light down there and they're near the front. And they're in various different stages of success right now. Um, I have an epiphyllum in bloom. Um, so, you know, you can see that, you know, I've repot some. This one's from Gold Country. This is my Royal Doll. Um, its leaves don't look great. Probably need some more water, but I'm going to discuss water next time. But also because it's just been repot and it's possible I did it wrong because, of course, point three was when to repot. And he says we have to do that based on whether they root before bloom or root after bloom. But again, that will be um, for another day. So I'm not going to talk about how badly I failed to follow those rules um, on repotting today. So, but this is light. So I'm giving these a lot of light. Then we come down to the underlayer right here, which is on the ground, closest to the cats where they can be eaten. And um, a lot of this stuff is stuff that's been recently repot. Um, right here, I have um, least favored um, no ID cat layers that I'm babysitting for the iOS. Right down in through there. Uh, this is my Kukara Tropical Snowflake. And so um, I have found things that with Brutonia don't need quite as much light as others. And I think this is like a malformed petal here. Yes, it's was stuck. Well, I don't know if it's malformed, but stuck. I'm trying to pull it off. It's all, because it should look like this and not like that. Um, so it needs to be, come on, peeling it off just a little, break it free, or possibly not, now it's just ripped. It's hard to do this one-handed. Okay, so then I have over here some larger plants I couldn't get up top. Um, actually, this ben uh, BC Benosa was up top. Um, I have two pieces of it. So I have one that's in bark and I have the other in semi-hydro and the one in bark. Well, I got just on the ground. Um, it's in bloom. Uh, the semi-hydro piece actually is up here, but it's, um, I don't think it is in bloom. So it's also all the way up against the window over there. So it does get a lot of Eastern light. And so I guess that's enough. I have here, let's see, next row, I have my Guatemalensis all the way up there. So it's up at the top. It's not all the way at the front, um, but it is up at the top to give it as much light as possible to give it the best blooming. I think I'm doing that pretty well. Um, I also have Guanagar Apple Blossom. Actually, that wasn't sitting there before. It was on the ground. I had to move it up because Pinto decided that he was going to eat my Guanagar Apple Blossoms. And um, it also likes to have a lot of light. So, I mean, that's the main problem with cat layers, right? Is that the, uh, they all need a lot of light. And you have to decide who gets more light and who gets less light. But see, so all these are getting the most light I can give them, and it's tiered. On the next level, I have more Catleas with space, eastern exposure to get them much light as possible. The, the main issue with how I'm growing is if you look in here, you can see that everything I own is very, very tightly packed. I mean, I don't have a lot of space. And so, you know, they're shading each other and preventing the light from getting through. But I am trying to put my catalyst on top. And then I'm putting other things that don't need as much light, like my dendrobiums, um, my sim, my um, Symbidiumus sympholium, my Insidium alliance hybrid. See, they're all at the bottom. And I'm trying to give my cat layers the most light. So I'm trying to give them eastern exposure or I'm trying to put them on top. So here, even here, all the way toward the back of my grow area, 
Um, Catlands on the top shelf, the biggest ones, the ones that are lean more to the standard than the compact. You can see a lot of those are way over 12 inches in height. Um, and then, you know, as we just said, so here I have like seedlings. They don't need all this much space, but um, my seedling rack is right here. It's a little bit farther back, not as well lit, but high enough so that I can have a good view of it. Um, this is just a Fred Clark, my uh, Ruby Delight um, that's fading and it hasn't stopped blooming yet. It needs to be repot. Um, and then I have more cattleyas down at the bottom. So probably these would do better if I moved them on top. So they were up above the oncidiums right here, which are shading them. Um, but now we run into the problem that I have too many cattleyas and not enough room to put them all. So even though I tried to tier my shelves so that um, the cattleyas get the most light, uh, I do suffer some of the problem like here all the way toward the window where the eastern light is the best and they get the most light, um, then we have problems with watering because I have a hard time reaching them and making sure they're getting watered even with my wand. So that's how I have tiered my cat layers. I have them in a room, get some as much light as I can give them. It's an Eastern and a Southern exposure together. And then um, obviously I have my biggest, oh, Jeannie. Jeannie, you have to knock that over. Um, I have my biggest ones um, on top. And then I have my smaller ones on the bottom. And I'm quite sure that I could use some organizational improvement in terms of light. Um, you can see I just have, I have a really big bloom season going on right now for cattleyas. I have um, cattleyas in bloom everywhere. Um, this is, um, let me see, this is the jewel box Scheherazade right here. And it's on the bottom because it's too large. And if I could have gotten it up on the top of the shelf for more light, I would have. Um, so I think I have tried with the space that I have to maximize the amount of light that I can give uh, my cat layers. So I think I'm doing pretty well. So that was number one in his lecture, light. Try to give cat layers as much light as possible.